What up? Welcome back to the channel. I just finished building something that I wish I had eight years ago when I was graduating from art school. It is my new ultimate independent artist dashboard inside Notion. So that's what we're going to go over in today's video. First half is going to be a full tour of the template setup. And then the second half is going to be a full tutorial on how I actually built it. Timestamps below if you want to skip to a certain part. But if you're ready, let's fucking hop into it. <laughs> Here we are inside of the independent artist dashboard that I built in Notion. So here at the top, you can see I just added a fun GIF banner from Jiffy. You can find them by just Googling pixel Notion cover, something like that. If you do that, like there's a ton of GIF, cool GIF options that'll pop up for you. Below that, we got the title, just a little quote for why. I wanted to make this template. So like I want to abolish the art world model that turns young artists into student debt servants, need to chase and rely on outdated institutions for knowledge that should be free or affordably accessible. I want to abolish resource and knowledge gatekeeping. That was kind of like my mission in mind when I built this. The reason I built this is that if I had something like this to kind of hold myself accountable and keep track of what I needed to keep track when I was a student and maybe freshly graduated or even before I had gotten into college, then I might have had better success immediately after when I was, when I wanted to do that. When that was like my primary goal was to create projects and submit work and stay organized and like do all this other cool art stuff that I was doing at the time, then like this would have been a game changer. And that's kind of the mindset that I went into building this out. And it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple in terms of like, actual notion knowledge required to build it. So at the top, we have three buttons that link to my CV, my Google drive and my website. Those are like the three most like essential things that an artist should have on hand at all times. Um, a CV to quickly reference, to make updates to, to submit for any applications. If you're not a photographer, then really just like, you just need a Google drive to keep track of all of your art projects, your images, your artist statements, and the applications that you fill out. That's that's really it. Like you just need a Google Drive to do that for you and you should be able to quickly get back to it from your dashboard. And then your website, because you're constantly gonna need to update it with new works, new writings, anything that you have that should go on your website, like you wanna be able to quickly get to it. So I just included a button to quickly go to my website. Underneath that is just a really simple to-do list in Notion inside of like a block quote box that I'll show you how to build in a second. This is just for someone who wants to log in, make some quick like to-do list for themselves and check them off as they go. So that's why I included that there. On the right hand side is the navigation and I'll cover each of those pages in a minute. And then underneath that we have like your art project database essentially. Instead of keeping track of all your projects just in a folder structure with a bunch of random writings and maybe on your website and stuff. This is an actual like database for your projects, right? So you can open that up. You can write out the years that you've been working on the project. You can link to specific artist statements, the high res JPEGs, any videos that you might've made for the project. It's page on your website. Uh, you can link it to any applications that you have filled out with this project to specifically reference back to. You can tag it with whatever you want, like the medium that you're using, the theme, whatever makes the most sense for you to tag your projects. I wanted to include that here for quick searchability. And then the status, right? Like, is this project an idea? Is it in progress? Are you like officially done working on it? This is just kind of a good sorting tool that I like because I feel like it's really hard to lose track of all the ideas or all the in progress things that you've actually started on. And so that's why I included that here. And then for ideation, I also included like these kind of beginner questions for just sort of thinking out your project. You know, this is Notion, so you, it's great for writing down documents and just word vomiting onto these pages. So like you can include like extra pages for specific documents that you want to reference or specific notes or whatever, whatever makes the most sense for you and your project can all be included here. But this I thought was just like a really great starting point for anyone that wanted to keep track of all of their projects in like a central database, but didn't want to, didn't know how to really do it. Right. And this is all stuff that you can do with the free version of notion. So like everything you're seeing here, you don't need to pay for like you, if you want to download my template, that's going to be $5. But other than that, like you can just build this for free 
and just run with it from there, right? And so that's the home page of the dashboard, just a place for you to quickly get to what you need and like see what you need to do and reference back to anything that you need to reference back to. On the right hand side, we'll get into the navigation pages more now. So I've got like a really simple applications tracker. If you're applying to a specific program, a residency, an open call, whatever, I've got a template for keeping track of those, keeping track of the due dates and the deadlines here if you need to adjust it or move things around. Um, you can keep track of them by status up here. If you open it up, then you'll see another like kind of template that I created for applications. I'll just click on that, right? So we have the status, the priority, the due date, the cost. So like a lot of applications cost money, some don't, but you know, you can keep track of that here. Uh, the project that this application is related to, you saw that on the project's database, it works both ways. So if you're filling out an application, you say, oh, I wanna link it to a specific project, you can add it here and it will also show up on that other dashboard. If we go down underneath that again, like tags, you can tag them with whatever you want, publication, show, residency, you name it. Uh, you can just add whatever tags make the most sense for you. URL to the specific page or website that the open call is being hosted on or where you found it and archive button. So that way, when you check the archive button, it just, it hides it and it, that way you don't see a ton of like irrelevant applications that are just dragging the page way far down. Right. And then underneath that, I had a really simple drop down with just the basic materials submitted. So usually it's like an artist statement and images, right? Most of the time, that's all they ask for. Sometimes they'll ask for like a floor plan or like a mock-up or, you know, whatever. But those are kind of more special cases, which you can obviously add in here if you need to. But I wanted to keep it like as generic and straightforward as possible to begin with. And, you know, as you're working on a specific application, you can always just drag and move it over into these separate columns. Up next, we've got the art inventory tracker page. Again, this is just like a really simple database. I think what a lot of artists just need are simple databases to reference back to, but they don't necessarily know how to set it up or they don't want to do it in Excel because Excel sucks and it visually is just a nightmare, right? No one wants that. So that's why I set it up in this way as just a bunch of different tables to essentially reference back to and pull data from over time. So your art inventory tracker, if you're not a photographer, this is going to make a lot more sense. So just think about this as like, you know, your paintings, right? You just are going to list each of your paintings or any prints that you might have for sale, the medium, the dimensions, the status, basically like where is it if you're loaning it out to a gallery for a show if you have it at your house if it's listed on your website that would be like the status of it where it is project that the work relates to and a link if you have it on a specific store or a website we can open this up and i also include an inventory number sometimes if you're working with a gallery they will assign an inventory number to your work if you have a lot of work in storage somewhere that may be a good system like if you're writing out these numbers on a slip case or something like that it's just easier to quickly reference than the title quantity price per unit if it's in transit or moving somewhere you might want the shipped on and expect the delivery date and then just any other general notes can go down here. I included a works in transit so that if you do have anything in transit, you can see what the work is, when it was sent out, and on what day it's expected to arrive. So just something like that, I think could be really helpful for a lot of people that might have a lot of work in a lot of different places, but they don't, they don't know or they're having a hard time keeping track of all of it. Moving on from there, we're gonna go into the contacts database. So again, this is just a really straightforward table. I think that's all people need, right? It's better than having it just on your phone. It's better than having it in a random Word document somewhere. It's better than keeping it in your notes or whatever right here, literally just listing out a person's name, their address, their email address, their phone number. If they work somewhere, like what is their title? like? tagging them as like a specific type of something, an art dealer, an art organization, are they a curator? You know, who is this person that you just met? Like what website would like you best find them at or something like that. And then some like personal notes, right? So you can rem actually remember something about them. Like 
You met them at an opening and they told you to send them an email. Well, great. Set a reminder then to send that email. After the contacts database, we have art project ideas. This is literally just the art projects database from the first page, but only filtering to show the one set to the idea status. So you can quickly like add this as a widget on your phone's home screen and just quickly jump into it. Anytime you have some random idea for like an art project, you can just drop it in here, add some notes about it and like move on with your day and then reference back to it later, move it over once you feel like it's time to start working on it and really just have like an organization system for your ideas as opposed to just having all these thoughts in the ether, right? All right, and then after that, we've got the money manager. This is two tables. One is a weekly expense tracker. So it just sorts like, um, I don't know, like, so it just tracks the, the money coming in and coming out for your art, right? Like, what is it? You can tag it with whatever what bank account it went to, right? And the amount. Really simple, really straightforward. You can get a week view or a month view if you wanna like tally up all of your expenses and incomes. And then underneath that is the subscription tracker database, which again is really just for keeping track of like anything that you're subscribed to for your art practice. You could use this for your personal stuff too, but really it's just like meant to be like, okay, I pay for my domain, I pay for this, I have like my weekly art collective dues or some random thing like that that you're paying for. This is where that would all go. All right, and last but not least, before I show the actual build out of all of this is the Ultimate Artist Resources Database. And in this, I included a lot of resources already from just like my personal like collection of resources, but Basically, this is a database to keep track of podcasts, websites, Instagram accounts, anything that could like potentially be useful for an artist in like making anything they want to do or like containing any resources that they want. Each entry has a ton of different categories to it. So like just take your time, go through it, take a look. There's a, there's just so much, but I wanted to this to be like a tool for that anti-gatekeeping that I talked about in the message, right? People always act like resources are so scarce and that's just because we don't talk about them enough and we don't share them enough. And there's not enough accounts dedicated to sharing resources with artists as there are for like making content online, right? So I think something like this could be extremely helpful for someone to just keep track of for themselves and share with others if they feel like it. And that is the complete tour. Now I'm gonna reset and we're gonna build this all from scratch together. All right, now that I've got a full reset, we're starting on a totally blank new page here. So we're gonna call this independent artist dashboard, right? We'll quickly add a cover and an icon because you need a cover and an icon. I mean, come on, what are we, who do we think we are, right? We'll just quickly add an icon, something cute, emoji, art. Yeah, easel, right? <laughs> Alrighty, and then underneath that, we'll add the block quote. Underneath that, we'll add the buttons. Spell button wrong, but that's okay. So. We'll say my CV, add an action, and then it's gonna be open page or URL. From here, we'll select a page. I'm just gonna put youtube.com for now, but you can drop your own link to your own CV in here. We'll document, there we go, done. I'm gonna make this full width page. We're gonna hit that, we're gonna duplicate that twice. Move that over. Edit that to be my Google Drive. Filing cabinet, done. Here you get, again, you would just update the link here. Get done. I was having a hard time reaching the gear icon, so I had to just collapse my sidebar, but edit that. 
we'll call this my website, hit the enter button or hit the done button. Again, you would update like the link down here, hit the emoji, web, uh, where's that globe? Yeah, that's the web globe. Great, so that's the top half. Now we're going to add two call out boxes. This call out box is gonna be the to do list. And you know, just hit one, two, three, four, five until we got what we want out of it. Here is going to be the navigation, change that. I like the atom icon for navigation. Hit that, we're gonna hit a couple pages. That's gonna be the application tracker. Go back to the dashboard. We're gonna duplicate that a couple times. Five and six, we'll worry about the title of those later. Underneath here, I'm gonna add an H2 heading. I'm gonna call this our projects, drop in our emoji. We're gonna highlight this yellow. All right, underneath our projects, again, we're gonna hit backslash. We're gonna type in table view. We're gonna select new table. We're gonna title this art projects database. I'm just gonna call this all, right? And then from here, we're just gonna add our fields. All right, and then from here, I like to open up the actual database entries to add the properties. So for the date range, I actually made that a text field and I just added the calendar next to it. The reason being is that Notion won't let you just add like the year to year range in the date field. So I have it set like this. So that way I can type in like 2017 to 2019 for a project date. From there, we're just gonna add a few URLs. It's gonna be the statements field. This is gonna be the I res images. So it's gonna be the video field. Website. We've already got tags up here. We can add a few tags if we want to. Right. And we're gonna add in a status field. I'm just gonna change unstarted to idea, change that to purple because I like purple. I move that down. And then we're gonna add a I'm not gonna add the relation field just yet. I'm gonna make the applications page first. But that is how you set that up, set up that da database. If you wanna move anything over, you can move them over. If you wanna hide a certain status, you can do that from here. Hide a certain status. I meant hide a certain property. I'm gonna hide the database title as well. And then I'm also just gonna add in a gallery view because if you add an image and you just want to like look at your art projects by like the main primary image then that's how you would do that all right next we're going to move on to the application tracker i'm going to use the folder emoji again full width we're going to call this uh board view New database. Application tracker database. So that I can edit the properties. Delete that. 
status we're going to edit that all right status we're going to edit this so that we can add in the submitted Great. Now we're going to add our other fields. I'm going to add a single select field for priority. Let's select that. Rate, options, low, medium, high, urgent. We're going to select a due date. We're going to add a number field. The number format is going to be US dollars. Cost, ST. So don't forget, we are going to add a multi select field, and we're just going to call this tags. We're going to add a URL field. And we're going to add where is that checkbox? Archive. And you can move these wherever makes the most sense for you. And then last but not least, we're gonna add a relation field for the projects. So that way project shows up here and application shows up on the project database. Great. And then if I go back to the project database, you can see that that application has updated. I am gonna just quickly give this folder or something other than the arrow emoji. I also realized I forgot to set up the template. So we're gonna say, oh, gotta move myself out of the way. I'll move myself back in the way. So we're just gonna call this New project status is going to be set as idea. Then we're going to add the H2. We're going to duplicate that. What? Great, so now we have the template set up for the ARC projects. We'll hop back into the application tracker. This is all looking pretty good. I'm gonna move accept it over the ARC grouping. I'm gonna filter it, show archive is unchecked. Great. We are going to then copy link to the whole database. I'm gonna hide this, come down under here, hit that link database view with enter. Layout, we're gonna change to calendar. We're gonna call this calendar view. Come down here, we're gonna filter unchecked, and then we are going to sort by due date. Great, so that way when we add a due date here. You can add an end date as well if you want to see the full range of the application. Now you can see that populated on the table down here. We're quickly going to make our template. All right, we're going to keep it all the same. We're just going to add that H2 toggle. Three is going to be statements. Uh, the H3 is going to be images, right? Cool, good to go on the application tracker. Next is going to be the art 
inventory tracker. Box cover. We'll leave that. Full width, always. It's not for any particular reason other than I just like it. So if, if you're asking if there's if you're gonna ask if there's like a functional reason for it, I just like seeing my shit across the full page and not centered. This is going to be another table database. Our inventory database. Great. Title. We're gonna open one of those up and we're just, we're gonna get right into it. So we're gonna add the text field for dimensions. Give that little ruler height by width by depth. That's kind of like the standard. We're going to add the single select as the status. And I'm not going to add the emojis for right now. That's how you would add them. And then you can always add an emoji in here and change the color. Obviously, you're going to add an inventory number. We're going to add a relation, link this back to the project. We're not going to select to show it on the project database because we don't need to see the specific pieces of art associated with it. You can if you want to, but that's just not, wasn't what I needed. So add another property text. We're going to call this medium. Another text field This is going to be the location. I'm going to add the little house house. So you know where it's at. Okay. This is going to be the shipped on date. Plane taking off. We are going to duplicate that. Rename. Expected delivery date. And plane landing. Capital T. We're going to add another number value for the quantity. Is this a one of one? Is this you know, a print in a series, add another number value, this dollar cost, money icon, and then we're just going to add a website URL field. Great. And you have got your tracker. That's it. Now we're going to add a calendar view. And we're going to filter by status in transit. So if I take a look at my new entry and I set the status to in transit and I add an expected delivery date. All right. I forgot. I need to come up here, layout. Show calendar by expected delivery date. So now that'll show up here. Great. Properties, I want to show the delivery date and I want to show the shipped on date, but I want the shipped on date on top. So that way I can see both. And that is the art inventory tracker. I'm gonna move myself back over to the side there and we're gonna keep it rolling, folks. I hope you're still with me here. I feel like I'm doing a demo at work right now. Alrighty, this one is going to be the context database. I'm gonna speed through this one because again, it's just gonna be setting up a table view and then adding properties. So I'm going to just fast. I'm going to time lapse through it. That's the word I was looking for.
All right, and that's it. It's literally just a table with all the fields needed to fill them out. And then obviously for the tags, you can add whatever you want and edit them and change them around in the tags field. Next is the art project ideas page. I'm literally just going to copy a link to this main database. We're going to make this full width. Drop that in, link database view. And then we are going to filter it by status ideas only. That's it. You can hide these if you want, but you don't have to. It's really up to you. And then once you update them, they'll pop off. Cool, pretty neat, pretty really easy to set up. Right, some big brain activities in here. Up next, we've got the money manager page. Full width. You know, you gotta include a money manager page because artists are terrible at money managing their money. Sorry, I don't make the rules, I just live by them. Table view. I keep doing that shit. Bench tracker, we're just gonna call it this field. Description, tags. This one is going to be the category. So, you know, sale, expense, whatever. We're going to add in I'm not going to do that there. I'm going to open it in here because it's so much easier. We are going to add in a date for the expense date. We're going to add in a number, number format, USD. Obviously, you can change this to whatever currency makes most sense for you. And then another single select for the Right, so I'm gonna say checking or credit. And then at the bottom of the amount, we're just gonna calculate the sum. There's sum. <laughs> that makes the most sense, right? So if we add multiple Right, it'll do that. If it's minus, it'll subtract it. Pretty cool, pretty neat, pretty straightforward, which is what we love about this type of uh, template. I'm gonna hide that. I'm gonna add a date for this week here. And then I'm gonna add a date for a couple weeks ago here. Because I'm gonna filter by the date show only this week. Great, and then I'm gonna add another table. I'm gonna call this one month. We're gonna call this one week. I open this up. I'm gonna filter this by the date for this month. Great, so you can see that's it for the money manager, the expense tracker. You can add a title here if you want to. Turn that into H2, right? Highlight it in green or give it green text, whatever you, whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you feel fancy, right? That's, that's what we want here is to feel good, feel fancy with our fancy new independent artist dashboard. Alrighty, and then we've got the subscription tracker. So this again is going to be a table view, but I'm gonna have to add in some formulas. Name, tags, again, it's gonna be just like subscription, tags. I'm going to add in an account again, checking 
you know, we can add our credit card, whatever makes the most sense for us. We're going to do billing. I'm going to call this yearly. We're also going to add a monthly. We're going to add a status active canceled for now you can add an on hold status if you want we're going to add in a renewal date we're going to add in the assist cost us dollar <laughs> we're flying through this guys it's really easy really straightforward I'm sure if you have me on 2x speed right now, you're just like, all right, I get it. Like, it's just, it's just repeating tables. It's not that fancy, which is really the whole point, right? I wanted this to be easy for anyone at any level of Notion skill to be able to build. And if you're unfamiliar with tables or databases yet in Notion, this is a great way to get comfortable with using them. Alrighty. And then this is the part where I have to copy over the formulas. So I'm gonna use a formula. I'm gonna to go to edit formula. All right, I glitched out there with the subscription tracker for a second, <laughs> but basically I just, I built the table and then I copied over the formulas. So let me just open these up so you can take a look at the actual formulas. I'll move myself over to the left side so you can properly see them. So, Here's the formula, take a quick pause in the video so you can actually like see it and copy it. So I'll save that, that's the monthly cost and then the yearly cost formula. Alrighty, and then the rest of this is literally, again, it's just a table with the different properties. So I'll open that up. You can see it's a number value, a date value, a bunch of single selects, and then the two formulas that we just uh, went over. And that's it. Then on the calendar view, you can see like any renewal dates that you have coming up. And that's really it. That's the money manager. Simple, straightforward, just copy the formula. I was having to <laughs> trouble with it, so I apologize for that weird cut you probably just saw there, but it is what it is. Um, you'll be able to build it if you just copy the table view and then just copy the formulas in. All right, now we're moving on to the last page. That's going to be the ultimate artist resource database. Amazing, fun, full width, don't know why I'm singing. Computer person typing. I'm not just leave the default one, obviously. Table, I'm not gonna select the regular table. I spelled database wrong. And honestly, at this point, you guys know the drill. We're just gonna open up one of these and we're just gonna start adding a whole bunch of properties. All right, that's it. That's that's it. All we had to do was, was uh, set up those properties and that is basically the entire resource database. And now if you want, you can add different table views and just filter it by the specific tags that you have set. So if you want things that are only books to be on this one, we'll call this books. Again, 
truly bugging today. Then you just repeat this. However many times you want for whatever types of resources you want. And you just really, at this point, you can just make it your own and do whatever you want with it and share it out with people if you feel like it. But that's it. That is the entire independent artist dashboard in a nutshell. All right, guys, and that is the video. Leave a comment down below if there's anything you feel like I left out. Let me know if there's anything you want me to add to this template to make it more useful, more effective for any of the independent artists who are watching this out there. And you know, smash that like button, hit the notification bell, um, subscribe to the channel, do all that shit so that YouTube knows that my channel is cool and will push me out to more people like you. So thank you, I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.